So uh, today I'm going to talk about the effect of rice ash gas uh, ash uh, on the durability of regular and flowable concrete. And uh, Kazi uh, Tamzidul Islam was my former graduate student. He was planning to uh, deliver this presentation, but he got stuck with some works. So I'll try my best to, <laughs> to uh, talk about it, uh, but uh, I'll be able to answer uh, questions you may have later on. Um, Okay. Okay. Looks like my full screen does not work. So I'll go. I'm going to use the regular screen. So uh, I will uh, provide an introduction followed by the objectives and then some background study and materials and methodology. Uh, then I'll uh, go over um, uh, some results and discussions and make some concluding remarks. So as you know that uh, um, rice is the. Uh, it is. Uh, Arkansas, we produce the most rice here, and uh, and uh, there is a shell uh, on the rice. And if we take the shell, so that is about 20% of the gross gross weight of the rice. And uh, then, uh, if it is when it is burned, uh, then we can get about like 20% of the shell as as an ash material. And currently, that is treated as an agricultural waste. And um, it has some pozzolanic properties and by the size, if we can make, we can grind or burn it well, then it falls into the category of a pozzolanic materials as defined by ASTO. So here are the few ifs here. If it is burned well, then it can be, uh, it can fall into that category. But our objective is to try our locally produced rice by rice land here. And um, so we tried with their um, as is rice, and then we also did some further grinding. And then also we uh, used some commercial rice as cash in this project. Um, so uh, one of the things that uh, our objective our goal would be to uh, find what would be that replacement. If we make any partial replacement, um, then what would be that quantity? Uh, so it can be used, but we do not know that amount. And some of the beneficial effect of that is that it will, of course, reduce the environmental footprint uh, because then we have to produce uh, manufacture less cement. And um, Right now, this disposal of rice as ash is a problem, so that will uh, mitigate that disposal problem. And also, it will be financially, it will help the contractors of the agency because we are using uh, uh, waste material. Uh, actually, that will be profitable for, uh, for uh, rice land if that can be used. And the regular concrete we know uh, that is used for uh, different purposes. You know that it is for building, roadways, um, culvert, all those things. But flowable fields, so that is another kind of uh, uh, entity or the other kind of construction that uh, many of us are not that fam familiar. So flowable field is that it is a low strength concrete and it flows by itself. Uh, there is no compaction is needed. So that is mostly done when some smaller area or some areas you cannot get your uh, compactor or vibrator there. So you just put it there and you just, um, uh, it will flow by itself. And sometimes you want to have it extractable. For example, you have utility lines or uh, pipelines. And now you, it may be, you may put your utility line now, but uh, later down the road, you may have to extract it and then you have to put it, uh, replace your pipeline. So it has to be low strength. And so if it is, yeah, at least like it has to, it, it does not have to, yeah, it should not go more than 1200 PSI. But extractable flowable field concrete, con the compressive strength is very low. It is from 30 to 200 PSI. And uh, what are the advantages? I already mentioned that it is, uh, you can move it, you can excavate it later on. It uh, takes less manpower, time and equipment. And the uh, other thing is that uh, uh, most of the time it is uh, the installation done, uh, can be done, is successful on the first try. Uh, 
uh, because you do not, that compacting uh, effort is totally gone for flowable field concrete. Um, so again, we wanted to see what are the different doses that uh, we can use and find the optimum doses. And then we prepare um, uh, FCC flowable field concrete as well as regular concrete and find their workability, flow behavior. And then of course, the hard concrete, we want to see the strength properties as well as ASR and, yeah, and scale scalability property, scaling properties. And also you wanted to do some uh, field mixing constructability. And we looked into the literature and uh, we, most of the literature that came from uh, other countries and um, it is they uh, found favorable results with rice as cash, but uh, we could not find any previous study for RSA in concrete, uh, uh, except that we started in 2018. That is when we started with regular concrete and uh, that is three samples that we tried, 600 micron, 150 micron and 44 micron. Those are the size, effective size. 400 micron, that is the as is produced uh, by Riceland and 150 micron, that is the one that has been done after grinding. Uh, we got that and 44 micron that we bought from the market. Uh, and for regular concrete that was reported that the finest uh, 44 micron that showed improved properties uh, and that, is, that was recommended. Uh, but coarser one cannot be used for uh, flowable, uh, cannot be used for regular uh, concrete. So that's why we tried for flowable fill as a backfill or other materials. Again, here are uh, showing the samples here uh, that we used. Can I add you something, sir? Uh, sorry, uh, I'm just got back. Um, and then uh, oh, okay. here uh, we have uh, uh, 600 micron, 150 micron, and then 44 micron. Um, that the, those are the RIS uh, sample. And the classy fly ash was used as a control for for the flowable field because uh, right now flowable they use like 70 percent fly ash for flowable field. And uh, so that's why we use that as a control and 40% and 60% uh, fly ash uh, but, um, that RSA was used in our study for flowable field. But for regular concrete, we use 10% and 20% and 20% fly ash that is currently used in, in the plant. And uh, here, are, uh, here is the flowchart of the entire project. So uh, we did literature review followed by collection of materials and then uh, did uh, chemical, yeah, uh, collect, uh, yeah, collect the chemical and physical properties or some of the tests that we conducted for the raw materials. They prepared the mixes and then, uh, 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 then also prepared samples, cylindrical sample as well as mortar bursts and then uh, we conducted compressive strength test and shell test, uh, ASR test and then analyzed the results and did a couple of field demonstration, a small scale field demonstration projects. I'm going to go through very quickly about some of the snapshot that I have for the follow up for the laboratory testing. So uh, you can see that how it looks. Uh, it looks like like a soup kind of materials for flowable field and it's kind of black color. Uh, and then here are apparatus showing the flow measurement because it needs to flow. So besides that fresh, con fresh concrete test, one of the property that we are interested in to see how much it flows. So that you can see that table that has the flow measurements. And here are some setup for ASR test and then uh, uh, de-icing chemical test. You see the mortar bar that soaked into the solutions. And here it is like showing that flow, the diameter of the flow. Um, and uh, we, for uh, different mixes, we measured the flow and I'm, I'm going to show it in the summary format, but these are like uh, from each mixes, we have this flow uh, diameter measurements. And here is the summary. We have this for mixture one, like 70% fly ash. So that is the control in our case, the flow diameter that came about eight, eight inch flow diameter. And we need to have at least like eight, eight to at least 18. So this water cement ratio, water cement ratio, that was to make eight inch flow. And we see that we, for, uh, for a mixture with RSA, the water, um, uh, water cementitious ratio, it is very high. Uh, for the control, it was 1.7. This is flowable fill. This is not 0.35 water cement ratio. This is 1.7 water cementitious material ratio. 
for RSA, it varied, it, it was more than 2.3. Uh, so that is, we need very high amount of water. And then for compressive strength, we see that uh, uh, here are some for regular, yeah, this, sorry, this one is for ASR test. What we have, we see that uh, with 20% RSA uh, here it, it, for regular concrete that ASR was, reactivity was high. So that's why we could not recommend that. But for 10%, that is also high compared to the control. So from that perspective, we could not see any beneficial effect of 600 micron RSA. And uh, same thing for coarser 150, that is uh, also the ASR value is high. So that's why we could not recommend. But for, uh, for the four, 44 micron RSA, we see that ASR that is lower than the control. So that's why 10% um, uh, or 20% RSA 44 micron, that can be, that was recommended for regular concrete. For de-icing chemical test, um, um, again, like we see like here, um, here some of the snapshot I'm showing. Uh, yeah, and uh, we found also like, um, 44 micron RSA, we had less deterioration or less damage on the freestyle cycle. Uh, so we recommended for regular concrete 40, uh, yeah, it was 10% uh, RSA, 44 micron, that will be the best one. And some of the fresh concrete properties as expected, like yeah, we unit weight that is reduced because of uh, the, that unit weight of RSA is uh, comparatively lower uh, than fly ash because it is coarser material. So you have more voids there. So that's why it is less unit weight. Uh, air content, we got uh, different kind of variation. Um, temperature, we do not worry much about. The compressive strength, so that was kind of uh, for um, coarse RSA, the compressive strength was significantly lower than the control. Uh, but uh, with the, uh, we, we see like uh, this blue one, that is the control, but the purple one, so that was 40%, 150 micron RSA. So the, that 40% was even giving higher compressive strength uh, and than the control, uh, but 60%, it was little less. Um, and then uh, if we look at the tensile strength, we see similar kind of trend. Uh, but 40% RSA, that is 150 micron, that gave even higher compressive strength in the flowable field than the control. And some ASI alkali silica, silica reactivity test, we see like that is we, after 14 days, it should be less than 0.1% for both sample 40% and 40% uh, uh, that is, 150 micron and 160, 600 micron, that ASR was less than 0.1%. So from that perspective, that is also acceptable. So we have recommended that 40% uh, um, uh, RSA as is, or after grinding, that is 150 micron, that can be used for flowable fill. And then we did some field demonstration in two, uh, one is at a, a local plant, uh, at Reserveback plant and uh, we had uh, DOT engineers and construction uh, uh, um, crews that coming from the plant, they attended this uh, uh, workshop and that was like a small uh, pipe that we put in there and then we, uh, we looked at, we uh, that has been like about, uh, yeah, about two years, the first one that was, uh, that was holding well. And then we had another one at our campus that was also, uh, that came out good as well. That was done by the facility department here at our university. And then we did some cost estimate as well. So um, we did, it is like the ballpark number and we found that uh, material cost, it will be like 30% less than the conventional flowable fill mixture. And so we have recommended that uh, we can use uh, as is, uh, uh, 60, 600 micron as well as 100, 150 micron um, RSA for flowable fill. But from other uh, properties and other things like, um, yeah, that uh, the 10% RSA modified mortar showed the, uh, yeah, that is uh, resulting in surface deterioration. So that's why from that perspective, we 
recommended that 150 micron will be the best one um, to go with. And 40% uh, RSA is good uh, for flowable fill. But if we use this uh, 44 microns, so that is definitely, uh, that can be used without any issue. Uh, that also, that is the same size as the cement. And um, so, uh, um, yeah, that is um, the, it could be most, uh, it will be economical and 30% uh, more economical than regular flowable fill. And for to acknowledge, of course, I have to mention about transit and um, uh, Arkansas Redemix Concrete Association, uh, near Redemix Concrete Plant, Reservoir Concrete Company, Riceland Food, for uh, helping us with this project. I know I went very uh, quick and we had 38 slides and, um, but uh, that's why I went very quickly, but I'll be happy to take any questions, comments, uh, Thank you. Thank you very much, Sahid, for, for your presentation. Um, please, uh, if we have uh, any questions right now, uh, you can ask Sahid. Okay. Um, so, one last uh, mm -hmm. uh, sure. Yeah, so sorry. Um, I'm Kazi. I was supposed to give this presentation and sorry, I got stuck with something uh, with my workplace. So the, I just want to add, add one thing that uh, like we did this research back in 2018 and 2019. And right now, as I'm in uh, working in the uh, construction industry, so we have been dealing with this stuff uh, for uh, like, uh, I have been dealing with this stuff for like almost one year now. So um, I would say that there is a huge scope of using these materials as a new construction material. Like uh, if, we could, if we can like uh, convince the city departments uh, about uh, the advantages of this material because like the mostly like the in the conducting pipe, like whatever it is like the sewer or the drainage, they have some kind of standards like the, the uh, they need to have the gravel underneath the pipe, which is sometimes like really hard to manage or in some places. But in that case, this flowable field can be really a good use. And also like the, from the economical perspective, the all these developers and the contractors, they always want to have uh, cheaper options. And in that case, this will also help a lot because like this will help and this will save a lot of their money in the construction. So yeah, and that's what I wanted wanted to add with this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Tamzid. Yeah, uh, this is kind of like uh, whenever I uh, go and deliver presentation, um, I get like question or request like, uh, this is a good uh, project to have a like even a startup company uh, here in Arkansas. So if we can process that, uh, uh, rice has uh, a big process as well, then this can be acceptable by the contractor as well as agency. Um, now I see a question that it is asking uh, from MS, uh, please describe the burning process of the rice hull. So um, the burning process, it is, I would say it's not that very complex, but this is like, you have to burn it like about 650 or 70, 700 degrees Celsius Fahrenheit uh, in a, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, yeah, uh, in there in the furnace. Uh, and uh, we try to convince uh, Rice Husk as well to uh, uh, get a furnace. So the, the cost, came out like about, they have to spend about $70,000, dollars uh, to uh, have that uh, furnace and then uh, install it and uh, that kind of stuff. But it is the temperature, huh? about, um, I would say about 700 degrees Celsius Fahrenheit. Um, that is how you can burn it. And only the burning, you have to, it, it cannot be still burned. Uh, we try to burn with clay oven as well, but the thing is that in the clay oven, like the pottery clay, pottery clay. So what happens like it burns on the top layer, it does not go inside, even though you maintain like 100 degrees Celsius Fahrenheit. So it has to be tumbled and burned uh, 
uh, and uh, then you, you can use it uh, for uh, construction purpose or then it will meet that specification. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have any additional question? Okay, uh, thank you very much for, for the presentation uh, today. Um, this concludes uh, uh, the last presentation of today's session. Uh, I'm also going to allow some uh, additional time if anyone has uh, questions for uh, the second presentation uh, where we uh, didn't have uh, a Q&A time. This presentation was on the feasibility of roller compacted geopolymer concrete containing recycled concrete aggregate. If, if anyone has a question on, on that presentation, please, uh, you can ask it uh, now. Okay. Um, thank you uh, very much to everyone for attending today's uh, uh, presentation and today's session on concrete uh, materials. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you all.